Once that right has been acquired, the person can apply at any time to be registered as a British citizen, and the right is not lost by a delay in applying. At the time of the 1981 Act, and for several years afterwards, the government fixed the fee for such registration at a level which reflected generally the cost of processing the particular application. More recently, beginning in 2004, in a series of statutory reforms, Parliament has authorised the government to fix the fees for applications for registration as a British citizen at levels which take account of other matters. Currently, the Immigration Act 2014, which I will call the 2014 Act, empowers the Secretary of State uh, to set fees for such applications in subordinate legislation, having regard only to matters listed in Section 68.9 of that Act. Those matters include not only the cost of processing the particular application, but also the benefits that are likely to accrue from obtaining citizenship and the costs of the exercise of other functions in relation to immigration and nationality. The aim has been to subsidise other parts of the immigration and nationality system by such fees and to reduce the burden on the taxpayer. The appellant, a minor who has Nigerian citizenship, was born in the United Kingdom in 2007. Her mother, with whom she lives, has not been able to afford the full amount of the fee, which, is 900, which was £973. Her position is not uncommon, as it is not disputed that many children and their families cannot afford the fee charged for such applications. The claimant, who has been anonymised as O, and the charity, the Project for the Registration of Children as British Citizens, have joined in a judicial review challenge to the level of the registration fee on the basis that the Secretary of State did not have the power to set the fee at a level which rendered nugatory the underlying statutory right to become a British citizen. Mr Justice Jay, at first instance, made a declaration that the Secretary of State had failed to discharge her duty under Section 55 of the Borders, Citizenship and Immigration Act 2009 to have regard to the need to safeguard and promote the welfare of children in the United Kingdom when discharging her functions in relation to immigration and nationality but he refused to quash the relevant regulations on the basis that they were ultra vires. The Court of Appeal dismissed the Secretary of State's appeal on Section 55 of the 2009 Act and also dismissed the cross appeal by O and the charity on the question whether the Secretary of State had power to fix the fees as she had done. O and the charity appealed to this court with the permission of the Court of Appeal. This court unanimously dismisses that appeal. I have produced the leading judgment, and Lord Briggs, Lord Stevens, and Lady Rose agree with it. Lady Arden has produced a concurring judgment in which she comments on the use of pre-legislative material in statutory interpretation. In the principal judgment, the court takes the opportunity to set out an explanation of the process of statutory interpretation and the role of materials external to the statute itself in that process, emphasising that the process involves the objective assessment of the meaning which a reasonable legislature as a body would be seeking to convey in using the statutory words under consideration. The court rejects the appellant's arguments that the case is concerned with fundamental or constitutional common law rights or convention rights and explains that the special rules of construction that are applicable when the principle of legality is infringed or the constitutional right of access to the courts is intruded upon do not apply. 
The court also does not accept the appellant's argument based on the case of the Queen and the Secretary of State for Social Security, ex-party Joint Council for the Welfare of Immigrants, that specific statutory rights cannot be cut down by subordinate legislation passed under the powers of a different act. The judgment explains that an earlier statute can be expressly or impliedly amended or repealed by a later statute. A later statute can empower the executive to make subordinate legislation which impinges upon or even removes rights conferred by the earlier statute. The court's task, therefore, is to ascertain the scope of the powers which the later statute has conferred on the Secretary of State, and the JCWI case imposes no additional hurdle. Where the court is not dealing with interference by statute with a common law constitutional right or a statutory provision that declares such a right, the normal rules of statutory interpretation are to be applied. Applying those principles to the facts of the appeal, the court concludes that Parliament in the 2014 Act has authorised the subordinate legislation which imposes fees which many young people and their families cannot currently afford. The appropriateness of imposing such a fee on children is a question of policy for political determination. It is not a matter for the court whose task is only to ascertain whether Parliament has authorised the Secretary of State to do so. <laughs>